All right, buddy. So what's your name and where are you from for the people that uh, haven't seen your previous episodes? My name's Mitch Smiley, and I'm from uh, California. I'm originally from San Diego, but uh, since I got out of prison, I lived in Los Angeles and South Central for a while. Now I'm up in the mountains in Northern California. Good old Northern California, ladies and gentlemen. And Mitch, your stories, uh, I think we had, what, three? I cut them into three parts. Three times you were on the show, and the stories were amazing, man. I mean... One can only imagine 38 years in prison, let alone 38 years in California uh, prison system. And, you know, this is why I wanted to ask you before we got going. um, Well, first, tell the people what what sent you to prison for 38 years. Uh, I was 17 years old and uh, I was in a bar with a couple other guys who I ended up becoming my co-defendants and... um, I grew up around, uh, you know, motorcycles, motorcycle clubs, all that kind of stuff. And uh, some guy in a motorcycle club came in the bar and sat next to one of my co-defendants. And then it was my co-defendant, me and my other co-defendant, and uh, made some derogatory remarks about a guy who had uh, just been buried. He had a funeral for, uh, basically, he said the guy was a punk and he got what he had coming. And... uh, he cracked my crime partner in the face with a beer pitcher, knocked him on the floor. Uh, I got up and socked the guy in the face a few times. Um, my crime partner and him uh, engaged again, tumbled out on the sidewalk. The guy was on top of my co-defendant's chest beating him. So I started kicking field goals with his head and stomping him out. And uh, somebody else intervened and stabbed the guy and uh, killed him. So. It's a second degree murder. I'm, I was I was found guilty of uh, aiding and abetting a second degree murder by vicarious liability. And in California, if you and I uh, commit a crime together, let's say I drive you to a liquor store, you go and rob the place and kill the guy, come out, get in my car, and we leave, I would be uh, an aider and a better. And I would get the same amount of time as you. All three of us got found guilty of aiding of a second degree murder. Uh, one guy got a, a extra uh, time for personal use of a weapon uh, enhancement. So, yeah, and you uh, did yours solid, man. You you probably could have you know said a few things here and there to get time cuts or whatever, but yeah. you remained solid, Mitch, and you did your thirty eight piece like a man. And uh, you know, I have a question for you, man. When it comes to California, you know, I've been to prison twice. And I know right. people can go in and make it out. Uh, but California is a different animal, man. You know, I've, I've been doing my research on prisons all across the country, and right. California is just treacherous. Would you say doing 38 years, let's say someone were to go in there five years ago or today to do 38 years, do you think he right. would, it would be easy for him to make it out on time? Uh, yeah, it's a yes and no question. Um. <clears throat> you know, when I went to prison, it was different. Uh, California prisons, they were treacherous back then as well, but um, the system was different, you know. It wasn't as structured. Um, you know, that prison gangs on the main line, and they locked them all up around 86. So I got busted in 79. So for those years, you know, I was on the you know prison where the, the prison gangs were out and all that stuff. But, I mean, it wasn't like now. Yeah. And now these kids that are in prison um, – they have different gangs, you know, they have skinheads and they have different stuff going on. And, and uh, now all the prison gangs are released from the shoe. So it's a different deal. You know, I mean, if you have a life sentence, I had a 15 to life sentence. And, uh, you know, I got busted right when the California started their tough on uh, crime. Right. So yeah, I did a lot of time. Now guys with 15 to life terms um, are doing 12, 15 years and getting out. Because the federal courts have intervened and said, look, you know, these guys don't have life without. They have 15 to life and 25 to life. And um, so they're getting out. They're getting out in 10, 15, 20 years. So um, it's a different animal now. But a lot of these kids that are in there now, they feel like, um, uh, you know, fall in line or be dealt with kind of mentality. Like, you know, be like us or or, or be a victim, you know, and that, and, and that, that was Something that I started seeing um, around 2000s, early 2000s, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but when I first went to prison, it was like, you know, 
uh, everybody knows California prisons are pretty racially segregated. So you hang out with your own. Um, but it was like groups of white guys, you know, cars, well, you know, and in a car back then could be three or four guys from different areas of the state. Now it's pretty much, you know, San Diego, Sacramento, you know, wherever you're from, that's your yeah. little group. But um, back in the day, you had little cars of dudes, and they hung out together, and they knew the rules, and they knew how to program, they knew how to watch each other's backs. Back then, that was a big deal. Like, you know, you didn't go to the shower by yourself. You didn't go to certain areas by yourself. When you went to chow, you would hook up with your road dogs, you know, your crew, and you go to chow together. And, you know, there's four guys on a table, so you watch each other's back while you're eating. You know, I mean, it was a different deal. Now it's like, you know, they have this uh, mentality that all the white dudes got to be in one, you know, deal, taking orders from from a, a, a shot caller, a building shot caller. All that stuff's bullshit to me. I mean, it wasn't like that back in the day. It's uh, That's what I mean. It's a different deal. Um you know, like I said, in one of my videos on my channel, you know, um, uh, if a guy, you know, now I have this thing, you can't wear your shower shoes in the day room, you know, because if something goes down, they want you suited and booted, right? But back in the day, if you told some guy he couldn't wear a shower t shoes walking around the tier or whatever, uh, you'd probably beat your fucking ass or stab you for trying to tell him what the fuck to do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. yeah it's a, so it's a different deal. Um guy can do his time though if, if if you go to prison in california with a life sentence you know you're going to start in level four they're going to be guys there running the yard so it's a balance you know you can do your time uh if you if you get a job you know mind your own business stay off the dope uh don't gamble all that shit you can get your points down go to a level three and then a level two later on you can do your time and get out it's not, yeah. you know, but it, it takes a lot of uh, of vigilance and energy, and you know, you got to be aware of your surroundings, man. And make the right choices. Now, this is another big question for me, man. Mitch, you look like a stand-up guy, man. You did your time, solid individual, man. You know, now when it comes to prison, not every state, but from what I've seen, California people don't take kindly to talking about prison whatsoever on camera it's kind of like a taboo thing uh how do you yeah. feel about that because you do have a youtube channel and you have done right. significant amount of time in cali man so right. how do you feel about this subject do you feel like as long as some things aren't talked about you can speak on certain things um well people have noticed like when i say uh uh when i talk about prison gangs i don't name any specific gang when I talk about motorcycle clubs, I don't mention any motorcycle clubs by name because I'm not a member of a gang and I'm not a member of a motorcycle club. So I can just say that these guys are there, whatever. And of course, there's some things that, that I won't talk about. You know, I mean, like, uh, you know, how guys do certain stuff as far as, you know, whatever illegal things that are going on in prison or, or ways that guys come up, you know, financially, uh, uh, you know, I don't talk about. You know, bottom line is uh, uh, <clears throat> if there was no dope and there was no money involved in prison, uh, there'd probably be no violence and there'd probably be no gangs. And, if, you know, that's the bottom line. There's a lot of money on the streets, obviously, for drugs and, and all that, right? But it's the same thing in prison. If you can figure out how to do something, uh, make some money, you know, everybody wants a piece of it, of course. Uh, you know, that's a whole nother animal. But, um that's what drives most of the violence in, in California prison. So, I, I mean, I don't talk about certain shit, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I, and I don't put myself out there like, you know, I'm just a regular dude. I don't want people to think like I'm some fucking outstanding Superman fuck because I'm not, you know, I'm just a regular guy. Uh, I was fortunate, you know, when I went in there, I had some older cats have been down, you know, seven, 10, 12 years that kind of, uh, schooled me a little bit and helped me along my way but um you know I, you know <laughs> i don't know about that because uh <clears throat> the way you know you got the youtube channel going you got what how many uh going on ten thousand subscribers correct uh about six we got about six thousand oh, six is still good you know still yeah. good fresh coming coming fresh out of the pen and look <laughs> i mean 
It's an amazing thing, ain't it? Well, tell me. Tell me what do you think about the comments? I know you've been seeing the dirty side of the comments, uh, man. <laughs> uh, you know, for the most part, uh, yeah, people are cool, man. They give me a lot of encouragement. They like they like my channel. They like my stories. Um, I try to keep things positive. I mean, I do talk about negative things that went on, but um, I try to keep it positive. And, you know, I get a lot of positive feedback. I also have a website, you know, where I sell, you know, gear, shirts, and all that kind of stuff, stickers, art, you know, it's uh, artintentions.com. So a lot of people have gone to my website and bought gear from me and stuff. I get some weird comments, man, like, uh, you know, I talked about female staff and how that works one time, and people are like, yeah, you know, you were banging that and all this other kind of sick shit. Uh... Pretty <laughs> sick shit. So, uh, you know, I get some <laughs> weird comments. And then there's these things they call them trolls or whatever. Trolls, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, one of them, you know, the guy's got like five different channels and he acts a different way in each one. You better watch him say, man, he might become you next time. Yeah, yeah, you know, so my wife, (laughs) (laughs) my lady deletes a lot of that shit because she knows who the guy is and she whacks whacks that shit right out before I get there. That's good shit, man. Old lady, but we can count our old lady. (laughs) Yeah, but you know, like I've had people contact me, man, on, on direct message. Um, you know, like the Marine, uh, Justin that we interviewed, um, he was in Iraq, you know, he's a Marine, he has a little PTSD, he had some problems with the drugs and alcohol and he direct messaged me and, uh, communicated with him. And to me, I was just having a conversation with him. Like I would just like a guy in the yard in prison, you know, or a guy out here, uh, you know, I go to NA meetings and if someone was approached me with this stuff, so I just rapped to him and. You know, next thing I know, man, this guy was just telling me how much I helped him. And, uh, you know, he went to rehab. He got his shit together. He's working in the oil patch down there in Texas. And uh, Amazing. You know, I, I just it makes me feel good that I, that I was able to help him. You know, I, uh, I like that a lot. Well, that's, that's great, man. And that's what I got addicted to, you know. Uh, what about people from other countries? Anybody hit you up from any other countries? Or oh, yeah, yet? yeah, yeah. We get guys from Ireland, you know, France, England, all over Australia. It's cool. <laughs> I'd amazing, like to interview man. some guys from uh, Ireland because, uh, you know, I'm Irish. And, uh, you know, I was in prison. Um, I was in level four in Lancaster, man. It was pretty shitty. It was around uh, 99, 2000. Uh, conditions are pretty bad. I mean, the food was fucked up. They were locking us down every time they wanted to do some stupid shit, you know. Like one time, the cops they have, a, you know, they have maintenance, you know, they have a carpenter shop. And uh, my friend went to work in a carpenter shop while the whole yard was down. They let him up to go to work to do a project, and he walked in the carpenter shop and he busted this cop who's the head of the prison guards union in that prison. He was uh, sanding down pieces of wood, like hardwood, like maple on a big belt sander making knives out of these wooden and my friend told me what the fuck you doing uh you know so I went the co's the were whipping up the shanks and that puppy yeah right? you know and then they scout them on the yard because they, they try to get those shops shut down they yeah. try to get more security where they could search people shut the shop down limit your access to and you know that's that's all a guy has in prison man especially like you know if you like to do woodwork you got carpenters if you like to weld you go to maintenance welding you know so they were trying to set set it up to where they are trying to shut it down, not actually help the inmates with making them shanks. Right. Well, what they like to do is just have free staff work in there. See, like in that say the carpenter shop where this happened, it also happened in the uh, in the mechanical maintenance. You know, they would find knives in there, the guys that they didn't make. I'm not saying they didn't make knives, but they didn't make those knives. <laughs> but um. So you got like two or three free staff that run a crew of, you know, anywhere from five to 10 guys. Like I was a plumber. And so that'd be me and another guy would go to the yard with a free staff, but we do all the work. They just monitor us basically. But sometimes they give us the key to the toolbox and turn us loose on the yard with work orders. And we go fix the plumbing on the yard. Right. Yeah. So what the, the cops, some of them would like to do is just have free staff doing that and no inmates. And they would say, well, see, you know, uh, they're making knives or they're doing this or they're doing that. So anyway, the yard was always locked down and uh, the food was shit. We got hard to no yard. No, no hobby was restricted. It was just fucked up, man. Um, and the cops are instigating shit against people. Uh, 
you know, I mentioned before that that same cop, uh, uh, some black dudes came down from Pelican Bay and they were on the yard and, and they were asking him something, man. He spit on one of them. And, uh, you know, they went, in the, they went in the pad, packed their property, came back out on the afternoon yard and took off on the cops, you know? Yeah. And started stabbing cops. So, I mean, that, that's the kind of shit that goes. So I went on, a, I told people, look, I'm going to go on a fucking hunger strike. I'm tired of this shit. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but my, back to the Irish thing, you know, my, priest there uh the catholic priest he was from ireland father white he's a big guy older man he's real smart he was a professor at a college for a while and, and uh uh you know of course uh, bobby sands man he was uh you know he uh did a hunger strike a leader of a hunger strike in ireland um so father white i told me i'm going to hunger strike fuck this you know i tried to get other guys to do it <laughs> and uh anyways after 10 days you know we're on lockdown and so they'd bring the trays to the cell, and, and I tell me one tray, one lunch. You know, my cell, he wouldn't do it. And he, and he would eat his tray, and he goes, man, I feel bad, you know, eating in front of you. I said, what, I'm missing out on what, you know? Some bullshit fucking uh, soybean and some grease, you know, fuck that. Man. Don't worry about it. Eat your tray, you know? So, uh, yeah. I wouldn't have uh, been able to eat it, bitch. I wouldn't be able to eat it with you. There's nothing like that, dog. Yeah. So, I would have uh, I would have looked down after you said that and said, all right, man. <laughs> yeah. You know, some guys were like, yeah, we'll get down with you, you know, but they didn't. Yeah. So uh, after 10 days, they took me over to the infirmary and they put me in a, in a cell in the infirmary that's actually designed for guys that have tuberculosis. Uh, it's a contain room, had a shower, you know, all that. I'm like, fuck it, you know. I had... Uh, some literature and I had a rosary and I had all this stuff. So I'm like, you know, fuck these people. I'm good. You know? Yeah. And, uh, but uh, after 30 days, they were promised me the world. And I, and I, I realized no one else was doing it. And, uh, <laughs> I did have some results, you know, later on, but, um, yeah, they were freaking out. I had the warden over there, everybody from the Lieutenant to the captain to the warden, like, man, begging me to eat. Come on, man, just eat. You know? And I was like, man, fuck. Well, what happened? What 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 was the last straw where you say, all right? <laughs> well, I realized I was a Lone Ranger, you know, and, uh, you know, they promised me, hey, we'll get you transferred to a better prison. We'll do this. We'll do that. We'll open up the hobby and we'll, you know, of course, uh, right away, you know, I went, so I'm like, all right, cool. And I went back to the yard and started eating and shit, but, uh, you know, they burnt me, you know, but later on, they did open the hobby up more and they opened up arts and corrections more and they did. They did some things uh, with some other guys that were kind of intelligent. Um, one of them had a life without, you know, he's out, but he also actually got a pardon from the governor and he's out um, now. But uh, we worked with staff and got things changed. You know, I mean, they realized, look, man, you got guys who want to program and do shit like me. I, I had the mentality that <laughs> I'm never getting out. Right. So yeah. I just want to do my artwork and kick it, you know. I could spend, you know, eight, 10 hours a day painting. Fuck it, man. That's what I want to do. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's, if you're doing that, you're staying out of trouble. You know? Yeah. But, well, uh, let me ask you, let me ask you something else, uh, about what I've heard from California, man. I don't know if it's just higher level or lower level, or if you even heard of it or not. Uh, but psych meds, I hear that certain situations, you're not allowed to be taking psych meds, man. Is that true? Well, yeah, you know, guys get on you for that. Um, yeah, I heard guys say, you know, you're not allowed to take any fucking meds at all. You know, fuck you, take meds will kill you, you know. But that's not necessarily true. Um, they have a psych program. It's called Triple CMS, CCCMS. I don't know what the words stand for, but it's a mental health system, right? Um, back in the day, they were just in two prisons. They were in uh, Vacaville. And uh, California Men's Colony, CMC, that's where they had the psych programs and they called Category J, right? So if you're a J cat, you're a nut. Oh, you know? that's where psych the term meds. comes from. But here's the deal those two prisons were pretty kicked back. CMC was kind of a piece of shit place, but Vacaville was kind of, you know, but they also had the lifer programs at those places because the lifer programs where category X, category T, they fell under the psych services, you know, but it was, everyone knew those programs are for lifers. 
you do the program, then you go back to the prison you came from. But uh, what would happen was guys would go to prison with, uh, you know, 150 points, which is level four. They're scary motherfuckers, and they don't want to go to level four, so they played a psych ward shit, right? And they would go to Vacaville or CMC. So what happened was uh, the system said, all right, motherfucker, you're playing games. So they said, we're going to have triple CMS in all the prisons, oh, right? Man. So all the prisons, or a lot of them, about a third of the prisons had triple CMS. So now you could go to a level four as triple CMS, right? So what happened in, and at the same time, they're developing these S and Y yards, these PC yards, they're expanding, right? So guys would come in and they'd be like, <coughs> excuse me, they say, all right, I'm going to go to PC. Oh, I don't like PC. So I'm going to go to triple CMS, right? Yeah, and yeah. Uh, there's another one before you, like, guys try to whack themselves or whatever. Anyways, they route back to triple CMS. So anyone coming onto the yard that was triple CMS, especially in level fours, they were whacking them. They were stabbing them because they found out that was the route for PCs to come back to the main line. See what I'm saying? So they go, all right, well, there's no telling um, if this guy was a PC and he's trying to come back to the main line or what. And there's no telling, right? So they were whacking them. They were, they were stabbing them. Uh, you know, I've been in prisons, though, like level threes and level twos where guys were on psych meds, you know, help them sleep, whatever. I don't know. So they don't just have a nurse that comes around to every block and just hands out pills and the guys, they just, they don't do that? Um, some places have a pill line at a central location. Oh, some places okay. have a nurse that'll push a cart to the unit and pass out meds to everybody in that unit. You know. Okay. Well, I, I, I now, uh, California got on this big trip with pain, you know, pain management because uh, California, the federal courts intervened in California prisons because uh, one guy a week was dying due to lack of medical treatment. So one thing they did do was say, all right, if you're in pain, you know, we don't want you to be in pain. They started giving out morphine, methadone, uh, codeine, all this shit for pain management. So now you have guys getting psych meds and guys getting pain management meds off the pill call, you know. Yeah. So. And that um, created a whole fucking mess all into itself, you know? Yeah, they they used to do that for the cancer patients while I was in prison, and they would somehow get the pills and give it to other people, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't know, but see, the reason why I asked that is because there's a few occasions over here where some guys, they would have to take psych meds, and when they didn't take their psych meds, they yeah. were straight psychopaths right. you know what i mean like right. i would literally m me and a few other people in the block would hope and pray that someone in this particular time would take his meds because when he didn't take them yeah. i mean it, it was anyone anyone could get it you know that's the kind of guy yeah. he was he was a maniac so uh that's why i was trying to figure out why wouldn't they want him to take the meds but now you know you broke it down the term j cat <laughs> that's crazy i never knew that so that's cool. That's cool. And it's crazy how many routes they have to go to PC, you know? We got to figure at that time, there was like 180,000 dudes in the California prison system. Yeah. I mean, that guy's triple bunking the gyms. I mean, it was ugly, man. All the day rooms are full of beds. So it was hard to keep track of who came from what prison and what. I mean, you could, but it took a while, you know? And, and uh, you know, and, and so uh, our story, like, uh, a friend of mine was in Salinas Valley level four, you know, and this guy comes on the yard and, he, and he's a nut. And, and uh, so my home, my friend's homeboy is living with this guy. And uh, so he tells the dude, Hey, just go tell him, man, you're hearing voices. Right. And uh, so the guy does, you know, and he goes, they get rid of him and they're thinking, Hey, he's gone. Cool. Whatever. Cause he didn't want to see him get stabbed. You know, he had a little compassion. Well, about 90 days later, the guy came back to the yard and put him in the cell with a shot collar of the yard. Oh, and he tells him, he tells him, hey, that guy told me to just tell him I was hearing voices, you know? Oh. So they ended up whacking the dude who told him to say that, 
And then they end up whacking him too. You know, they didn't kill him, but they stabbed him up. You know? So they whacked crazy. that dude for, for telling that guy a route where hopefully he could get off the yard, but they end up bringing the guy back to the yard. You know, by the time it gets around to where it's common knowledge, staff know about it too. You know? So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, if someone were, let's say someone has a common crime in California, uh, Grand Theft Auto or something, you know, just something nonviolent, and they're going to probably go to, at most, a medium or a low. Uh, what do you think are some sweet camps or prisons that they would try to aim for? Uh, you know, like, right now it's hard to say because they're mixing the S&Ys with the GPs now. All yeah. the level twos, all the level ones, and some of the level threes, they're mixing them. So it's hard to say. Um, you know, Soledad Central was a mainline prison, and Soledad North was S and Y. So I don't know if they're mixing them now, but like level two, Soledad North uh, Central was nice. They had decent food still. They had a big giant yard. Guys are playing baseball, football. You know, they had good workout area. Soledad Central was cool. Visiting was cool. You know what I'm saying? Uh, level two. Um, CMC kind of sucked because it was all dorm living. Sending lifers to level ones now, level, secure level ones. Level three, uh, <coughs> man, that's hard to say. Donovan used to be pretty nice. Uh, you know, most of them are fucked up now. It's hard to say. And you know that's that 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 in itself explains a lot when someone like yourself can't even give you a straight answer on which one's sweet or not. You know what I mean? There are no really sweet prisons anymore out here. Yeah. And the ones that are uh like easy time, the guys that are, you know, all that, they call them bad prisons. So I mean, you know, like Vacaville, CMC, certain places like that. They don't if you're in them pens, they're like, oh, you're a piece of shit. You're over there, you know. So, I mean, it's hard to say. But um, also, like I'm saying, that they're mixing the PCs with the mainline guys now, right? They're saying, look, man, you're either going to so, – so they don't have mainline GP and, and, and S&Y anymore. What they're doing is they're saying you're going to be on a program yard or a non-program yard, you know, simple as that. Yeah. So a non-program yard would have gang members and – drugs and violence and then non program yard would have guys I'm assuming that want to just program. I don't know. You know, old Corcoran was a good pin. Uh I was there it was level four and level three. It was nice. It, you know, they had good food. They have a lot of jobs. Old Corcoran has uh metal fab, they got furniture, wood, uh dairy processing, you know, laundry. So they have a lot of jobs, a lot of money and uh uh, they also have two big facilities of shoe, so you can get a job working in the kitchen that does the food for the shoe. And there's a lot of uh, a lot of jobs there, a lot of money. Um, they have a good visiting room. Uh, you know, Corcoran was cool. Old Corcoran was nice. Um, new Corcoran sucks. Uh, it's called uh, SADF, Substance Abuse Treatment Facility, and uh, there was a, recently a couple murders there. I don't know if you read about them. Uh, uh, Got yeah, a couple yeah. child molesters to death with a cane or some shit. And uh, I heard someone say, oh, you know, that sad F is a level two and you could lose your life in a level two and all that shit. Well, that's true, but not all of sad F is a level two. They have level four, level three, and level two yards there. There's like six or seven yards there. So the guy that did that, he already had a murder. He already had a life sentence for murder. So he was not brand new to prison with a murder on level two yard. He was probably on a level four, level three yard. Picked himself up a couple more cases, I imagine. But yeah. uh, he killed a couple child molesters, which, you know, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's the, how it uh, goes, man. Practice. You know, we used to use him for target practice back in the day. Yeah. Well, hey, let me ask you something, man. Getting close to the end of your bid or when you found out that you would be, you know, were being released – uh, what what would you have done, man? If you went to a cell and someone threw a piece of shit like that in there with you, man, would you just been like, man, I'm going home, dude? You know, uh, 
Uh, you uh, at least try to remove question. them. I mean, would you it's take the man's question. life? You know, that's a hard question. Um, well, you ain't got to answer if you don't want to. <laughs> man. You know, I, I, I had uh, I had homeboys there, man that 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 know me. They've been knowing me for a long time on the yards that I was at towards the end of my bid. And when I was telling them, look, man, I'm trying to get the fuck out. Guys are getting out now. They have life terms. And these are guys that knew me when I used to say, hey, you know, fuck, I ain't never getting out, so fuck them, you know? Yeah. Now they're seeing guys go home, and they're telling me, hey, brother, you can go home. Just keep doing your shit, right? Go do that little program over there and whatever and and go the fuck home. So these are younger guys. Like, um, you know, one time this kid owed me some money. He owed me like four or five books of stamps. It don't seem like a lot, but he was also in debt. He was a dope fiend. He was buying uh, weed for all these guys that, that were supposedly, you know, running the yard. But uh, my thing is, I'm from San Diego in the Dago car. I'm like, hey, we're from Dago. We run our own motherfucking program. You don't tell us what to do, right? So I'm walking to track my homeboys. And I saw this guy, and I'm like, uh, I'm like, hey, motherfucker, you owe me money. And, you know, I'm yelling at him, putting my finger in his face. But I told him, if you don't fucking pay me, I'm going to take your glasses. And I'm going to beat your fuck. Because he had some cool glasses. And, you know, he was, he was a, a surfer cat. <laughs> but, <clears throat> Orange County, you know. Anyway, those guys saw me yelling at him. So they come up, they come walking up the street, you know. And I'm with my little homeboys and shit walking around. And, and they're all, hey, smile. Like, we talked to you for a minute. And, uh, you know, my homeboy put his fists up. He told him, what the fuck you want with my homeboy, you know. And uh, they're like, whoa, you know, it's not like that. And basically, uh, you know, I told me hey, the dude owes me money. I don't give a fuck. There's a few books of stamps. He's going to pay me, and he's going to pay my homeboy owes money to, too, or I'm going to stomp him out. And, yeah. Uh, we got paid that night. But the bottom line is <laughs> if I got some turd tossed at my cell, I had homeboys around me that probably would have said, hey, look, brother, don't trip. We got it. And they probably would have stabbed him up or whatever. You know, now that's a damn good answer, my friend. They they wanted to see me go <laughs> home, you know. So yeah, yeah, and you know, uh, I want to see people go home as well. And I know there's gonna be situations like that. And I mean, what do you think a person should do? You know, uh, uh, now if you ask me, what would I have done? You know, twenty years ago, um, you know, there are guys that kill their cellies out here in the cell, no problem. You know. 20 years ago or earlier, you know, um, when I was a young guy, I probably would have got me a piece, caught that guy out on the yard somewhere and, and you know, and whack. Yeah. But, uh, you know, towards the end of my term, when I saw a light at the end of the tunnel, I'm ready to go home. I, you know, I'd have been a fucking dumb shit to do something like that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, plus, you know, 20 years ago or earlier, you could have got away with shit like that. You ain't getting away with that shit now. Yeah. You know, I, met, I met this a uh, woman who was a cop in San Quentin and she transferred to a lower level prison and, and uh, this is like 20 years went by and she told me yeah man uh, I remember uh, they killed so and so out on that lower yard and they went out and asked people you know what happened and they're all we didn't see shit you know and uh, she goes no one would tell on nobody for nothing back then and, and she goes now they, they just run to the fucking office can't wait to tell you know I mean some of the cops are even like god they, they just can't believe it you know there's no uh, honor in the game, it seems like, anymore, man. Um, yeah. Well, Mitch, let's go ahead and leave prison. Uh, yeah. What, what, what do you think has uh, been the hardest thing to adjust to out there, man? Has anyone disrespected you out there in the streets, maybe stepped on your shoe in the restaurant and didn't say excuse uh, me? Not really. You know, like uh, when I paroled, I was living in South Central L.A., <laughs> <clears throat> I live like two blocks from where the Rodney King rise started. Uh, you know, we're the only white guys in the neighborhood. And, and, uh, uh, when I was in this Chinese restaurant eating dinner, you know, these three black chicks come in, they're all looking at me. And one of them told me, man, what are you doing here? You know, and I, I'm like, I'm eating dinner. And, uh, she's like, then you're going home. Right. And I go, yeah, I live about two blocks up the street. And she's like, what? I see I live on 54th in Vermont. She's like, man, I grew up on that street, man. What, you know, woo, woo. and I told her that she come over my table, you know, she's like, I said, yeah, you know, I just got out of prison, you know, 38 years. And, and that. And she's like, wow, you know, but uh, I know how to turn a negative into a positive sometimes, you know, um, 
uh, I worked with these black kids and uh, they're like, man, you live over in that area of the town? I go, yeah, yeah. They go, man, that's the worst part of fights, the worst neighborhood there is, you know, because all these different groups are fighting with each other. They go, but man, you're white, man. You're cool, you know. Nobody gonna fuck with you. <laughs> Unless you're a Not white was. crip. Is, is Mitch a white crip? <laughs> no. <laughs> but, uh, you know, one time up here where I live now, um, we get a lot of tourists. And, uh, you know, walking down the sidewalk, because we're in the mountains by Lake Tahoe and shit. And uh, this group of family is walking towards us. And I always like scoot to the side, you know, two way. And this dude's on his phone. And, he, and my old lady's in front of me. And he bumped my old lady off the sidewalk into the gutter, you know. And uh, it took me a minute to register what happened. And and, and uh, I turned around. I said, hey, you motherfucking punk. You just knocked my old lady off the fucking sidewalk in the gutter, you piece of shit. And, uh, and his family's there. And my old lady goes, man, they got kids. And she goes, uh, they got kids and stuff, you know. And uh, he just kept walking, he, you know. And then... Uh, you know, the guy's mom goes, oh, I'm sorry. I go, man, fuck you, you know? I was mad. You know, if the guy would have bumped me, I would have been like, yeah, whatever. But, you know, you, you're not going to fucking disrespect my old lady like that, you know? I was pretty upset. And uh, looking back, you know, I'm kind of glad that he kept walking because uh, I would have hurt him. Well, if he would have turned okay. around and confronted me when I called him a punk and all that other shit, uh, I would have hurt him. I was yeah. mad, you know? I was upset. Damn yeah. right, man. And look, Mitch, you ain't no little dude. How tall are you, man? You look massive in the pictures I've seen, man. <laughs> I'm 6'4". Six, 6'4". Four, uh, six, four. Jeez. Yeah. yeah, you're a big dude, man. I would have kept on walking, too. I'd be like, excuse me, yeah. sir. I apologize, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he didn't even. He just, I said, I'm sorry. And then kept walking. I mean, I'm like, dude, you know. Yeah. And, and you know, I'm a big dude. But uh, even in prison, man, uh, the littlest guy, the weakest guy. Um, you know, if I was to bump into him or if I was to do something that he felt like I was out of line, I'd apologize to him. Yeah. Hey, I'm sorry, bad. My, my bro, you know, my bad, I, you know, and, uh, it doesn't take much to do that, you know, and, uh, and, and people respect you for that, you know, um, yeah. I was told my old lady and my friends, look, man, I don't want people to respect me out of fear. I want people to respect me because they like me and they respect me true, you know, if someone's afraid of you, uh, that's not respect. You know, that's just fear. You know exactly, um, exactly. Uh, I always enjoy you coming on to the show, Mitch. Go ahead, tell the people uh, what you got going on. Your channel name, anything you got going on, so people come follow you. Uh, well, my uh, my uh, YouTube channel is Hard Intentions, and uh, I've got a few videos out. Um, also, I got a, I got a. Uh, Here's one of my stickers. I don't know if you can see it. A little sunlight there. It's kind of a little hard intention sticker. You got that uh, t-shirt so, on a t-shirt Yeah, as well. yeah. I have a hardintentions.com. Uh, you know, I do artwork. <coughs> I do artwork back here. I sell prints of my art. I sell t-shirts. Uh, yeah, with my artwork on them. I got a hoodie campaign going right now until the 10th. We're doing a little prepaid uh, hoodie orders. But, uh, you know, I, that's what I do. I do... Uh, I've been doing a few paintings for guys like uh, I did a painting of a young guy's uh, dad's motorcycle of his dad riding his motorcycle across the desert, you know, and, uh, and uh, yeah, that's cool. People are yeah, asking man. me to do more artwork and stuff, but uh, yeah, basically I sell t-shirts, artwork, stickers. We're going to get some, uh, some patches made that we can sew on the hats pretty soon here. Um, you know, I'm just trying to make it happen. I've got about 15 t-shirt designs that, Eventually, I like to get them all into production, but, um, you know, and you see, I wear this metal militia hat a lot. Uh, they're kind of an inspiration. Uh, the guys that started that are savages. They do uh, a lot of motorcycle jumps, you know, the, the flips and all that yeah. on the dirt bikes, man. Uh, they're the ones that started that. Larry and some other guys. So they have gear out, man, and, and uh, some of them reached out. You know, I, I reached out to them, and they gave me some some info. They're, they're cool. But, uh you know, I like to just blow my company up. I sell what I think is cool stuff. I get a lot of positive responses about the shirts we're selling and people like them. So yeah, I'm for just, sure. Man. Uh, I'm just loving it out here, man. I mean, you know, I'm not getting rich and, uh, but I'm not poor, you know, I got, I got a good wife and 
I got her family support. We got a spot to live and food in the fridge. And you know, I get to ride my motorcycle. And, uh, you know, the other night I rode down to uh, Jackson to uh, Pine Grove, actually about 40, 45 mile ride to go to NA meeting with uh, we got Bowtie Barber up here. He, he shaves my head with a straight razor. Uh, you know, he's been in some trouble. You know, he faced a three strikes case and beat it. And uh, so he has a barber shop here in town. It's old school, you know. But uh, we, he just got a bike, so we ride to meetings together, you know. And uh, we might go down to SAC tonight for a meeting. Yeah, it's cool. That's uh, good, man. That's yeah. excellent. Nothing but positivity I'm hearing. Yeah. And, you know, you have some excellent videos. You know, I can't watch uh, all of them, but I have, I have popped in here and there yeah. and watched. And you're doing good, man. And, ladies and gentlemen, uh, go well, check you out the channel. Huh? You started me on the journey on this YouTube thing, man. Uh, my first interview was with you, and uh, people suggested I start my own channel. And, you know, I, you know, you two also suggested it. So, I, I mean, uh, I like to count you as one of the guys that's been a positive influence in my uh, my journey. It's amazing, thank man. You, uh, you're a cool guy, man. Hey, I'm honored. I'm honored <laughs> to be uh, giving you a window uh for people to see and hear your story you know but like i say to everyone anything after that anyone that decides to click that subscribe button man it's all on you you know that's all yeah. your people's they like you for you has nothing to do with me but yeah you know uh getting your story out there is the first step you know and i love the story and a lot of people uh enjoyed it you know your i think the first video we did i think it's going like 200 300,000 views yeah it's amazing, man. It's truly amazing. I never know how a video is gonna do. Yeah. Uh, I have I have an idea, and I kind of had a really good idea that yours was gonna do <laughs> extremely good. You know what I mean? But yeah. blows me away. It blows know? me away too, man. I'm still every day waking up, just doing this. It blows me away. I had never thought yeah. from prison to this, and you, man, 38 years, and you're doing it. You know, so this is just yeah. inspiration all the way around, ladies and gentlemen. Your side and my side. So. Anyone can do it. It doesn't matter what you went through. You can start up again and get on yeah. your feet and enjoy life, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah. Knock down ain't shit as long as you get back up, you know? That's it, man. That's it. Uh, like the, the he what was it, the heavyweight box match. I don't know if you watched it. Uh, that just happened. That guy got beat, but he came back and he won. Now he's a champion. It was a great match. Great match. Uh, yeah. But, ladies and gentlemen, I will keep uh, all of Mitch's stuff pinned in the comments section and in the description of the video, the links for y'all to click on. Uh, I appreciate you coming on the show, man. You're doing great out there. And yeah. uh, hopefully we can have you back on for a recap later on down the road. <laughs>